Hello everyone, welcome to Unrest. This is described as a role-playing adventure game set in a fantasy version of ancient India. From what I can tell, it seems to be a game of grey areas and hard decisions, and there's a large cast of interesting characters that you get to play as as well. I played the demo for about 5 minutes, it seemed very cool, and I've heard some very good things about it as well, so I'm excited to get into it. You can grab it from the official website, as well as Steam and a bunch of other places. I'll have links to all of that in the description. Let's begin. So there's two different difficulties, Myth and Mortal. Uh, Myth allows multiple saves, Mortal is sort of Iron Man mode as it says, which only allows you one save, so in other words you have to live with your decisions. And since I want my decisions to have weight, I'm gonna go with that. Let's name it Save 1, and here we go. Alright, I have to warn you in advance that I'm probably going to butcher many of these names, so prepare for it. I'm just gonna go with a pronunciation that sounds kind of cool and vaguely correct, and I'm just gonna call it good. Alright, you are Asha, sole heir to the throne of Bahimra, 12 years old. Bahimra, a city built by your ancestors, has stood for almost two centuries. At its prime, Bahimra was a sight to behold, a prosperous center of trade and an example to other kingdoms. However, those days are long gone. It has been many months since rainfall, and the earth is dry as bone. There is not enough food to go around, and the underclasses are starting to get desperate. Today, Asha's parents hope to reverse Bahimra's troubles. They are poised to make the decision that will redeem them in the public's eye, or condemn them. Alright, so I'm the heir to the throne? Yeah. The sole heir to the throne, and I'm also 12 years old. My god, what a pressure. Can you imagine that? Actually being an heir to a throne, the only one, and being 12 years old? Whew. Alright, let's look at my traits. Princess. Asha is the daughter of the royal family of Bahimra. And apparently I'm naive. Oh, Asha has never left the palace. Okay, so I don't know much of the outside world. Hmm. That is quite a problem. If I am to be a ruler. Like, you really need to know about the land you're ruling over. To rule, well. You know, well. The music is wonderful, by the way. Let's go look at the map. Alright, here I am. It's my uncle. So let's take a look at what I'm supposed to do. So there's my traits. There's my journal. The treaty. The treaty is being signed today. My primary role primary role is to go to the wall top and wave to the angry crowds below. <laughs> what? I'm supposed to wave to an angry crowd? Is that gonna calm them down? Uh, I guess I can try it. It's like, oh look, she's waving at us. Suddenly the hunger pains in my stomach have gone away. And my children are no longer starving. What do I have on me? Soldier statuette. Ivory elephant. Naga grammar. The tongue is unintuitive, but to an implied intellect, it is very possible to learn and even speak. And a couple... I was going to say a couple rings, never mind, that's a crown. That's a ring. I think. Wait, actually, is that a ring, or is that a like a like a wrist bracelet thing? I don't know. Not much of a jewelry person. Okay, so I need to go up. Let's uh, speak with the people around here. Let's talk to the palace guard. Good morning, my sovereign. Bows. Avinash, you are... my uncle. Asha, I know it's scary out there, but you're the princess. The people need to know their princess is there for them on big important days like this. Okay. So he's friendly, uh... Let's see... He's not very respectful of me. He's critical. And he doesn't have much fear for me, which seems appropriate, because I don't think I'm a very scary person. Alright. Hmm.
Alright, so it could be rebellious, surly, or brave. Well... I'm gonna be up above them, so I'm not really scared of them. It's not that scary. I've seen angry mobs before. I know you have. You understand that the mobs aren't your parents' fault, right? Your parents can't control the droughts or the famines, and they can't give homes to everyone in the slums. I think even the mobs understand that deep down. Bitter. Hmm. No, I know. Mama and Papa already explained everything. Asha. However angry people get, never forget that your parents were born to rule this city. Bahimra needs them, just like it needs you. If times are hard and things are scary, that isn't because your parents have failed. It's because Bahimra needs you now more than ever. I don't really know why the slums don't like the treaty. Who can say? But I reviewed the facts with your parents, and I agree that the Naga Empire's trade network will be the best thing that ever happened to Bahimra. Even Vijay agrees. Or v it's probably Vijay. Vijay agrees. And he's been advising against the whole venture for months. You and your parents will make things better, Asha. It's your blood right. Now? You've responsibilities to face. Okay. I will do my duty. Vijay! There you are, the ambassadors will be here soon. You won't have time to go out and greet them, but these soldiers will protect you while you address the mobs outside. Nothing formal, just wave and tell them we care about them. If they know we're listening, they won't be quite as angry. Yeah, but we're not listening. We're signing the treaty anyway. I know. Your parents made their decision, and the people don't like it. But we do care about them. And as long as they know that, the rest will be easier to swallow. Yeah, so why do they think it's a bad idea? That's a complicated question. I do think the treaty is a good idea. I think it can help Bahimra a lot. But I'm also afraid we're not going to use the treaty as well as we could. And I think that's part of why people don't like it. And they're afraid of the Naga. And that's another part. I just wish your parents would take the people's reactions more to heart. Don't stray from the guards. And when the ambassadors do arrive, you can show them the greeting you learned in their language. I bet they'll be very impressed. We want them to be impressed, don't we? Hmm. I kind of just want to keep being critical. Um... I mean, well, we're gonna sign the treaty. I guess I do want them to be impressed. Today is important. You should remember today, because one way or another, today is when things are going to change. Yes, but the question is, for better or for worse? Okay, I think I need to go this way. Oh, I'm already switching characters. Okay. you. <laughs> Alright, well, this would be where the fantasy elements come in. Because I appear to be, um... A snake thing. You are Chitra, Chief Ambassador to the Naga Empire, 56. Behemra has swallowed its long-standing animosity towards your empire because its fortunes are dire. The failure of the monsoon has left Behemra's harvests weak and its people desperate. As a peace offering... They took refugees from Empire colonies into their own city's slums. And now they offer trade. Goods for food. The Naga Empire can use such a trade. And the opportunity to send over more immigrants from its own over overpopulated professional classes. They've sent you to hammer out the terms. A last job before you retire. But from the riots when you arrived, it seems not everyone is in favor of the deal. Okay, so I'm 56 years old. And about to retire. Let's see. I am seasoned. Right, I am about to retire. That makes sense. 
I'm also Rhea's mentor. Chitra is a diligent mentor to Rhea. She'll be almost as good as her teacher someday. Okay. Alright, Inaga. I feel like I'm going to be sick. Where are their leaders? They were supposed to be here already. Hmm. Switch to their language, don't make them paranoid. Um... I don't think they're paranoid. Look, nothing is simple in politics. Just keep your head straight. Royal guards greet us. Royal guards funnel us here. Royal guards keep us here. And no royalty. I'm starting to feel very unappreciated. I'm starting to feel like the humans don't like regular shipments of food and medicine after all. Hmm. Alright, just calm down. Stay calm. I won't say it again. I'm putting a lot of faith in your confidence. Very well, then. What do we do while we wait? Talk with the other, lesser humans? Hmm. Okay, so I could try to impress them. So yeah, do I want to be impressive? Or do I want to just make friends? Just be nice. Or make them fear us. Hmm, I wonder if these just respond to these up here. Three options would that will raise one of these bars. <sighs> well, I don't want to do fear. I don't. I don't want to be that kind of a ruler, you know. I don't want to rule through fear. Nah. Hmm. Let's get their respect. Go around and show them crisp politeness. Impress them with your grace. I will regroup with you when the royals arrive. What an interesting creature. Look at me, slithering on the ground. Yes, yes. Dinesh, who are you? I got a good look at the way the slums are situated on my way in. Technically, they don't occupy any of what's considered Behemra's traditional footing. There's no real right or wrong answer, but I think it could be argued that they aren't subject to Behemra's laws. They certainly don't seem very interested in enforcing much order out there. Hmm. Wait, what are you talking about? There's no real right or wrong answer. Right or wrong answer to what? I'm not really sure what he's talking about. Just a lack of regulation? Hmm. Alright, oh, we have refugees out there. Huh. That's less than satisfactory. We've got refugees out there. They deserve some protection. That's a reasonable stance to take. But I imagine if there were if there weren't significant logistical troubles enforcing peace out there, they'd already be doing it. People here seem rightfully scared of the slums. I'd be interested to see what plans the humans have for them. Hmm. Alright, let's mingle. Oh, I won't take up Oh, I won't take up much of your time. Just wanted to say how much I was looking forward to this arrangement. Some of the fruits my family has traditionally used to brew Sura have become very hard to get a hold of. But our product is liked so well that the nobles offered us first pick of the shipments. Hmm. Yeah, isn't there a fu food shortage? Hmm. I would like to try it, though. Sounds delicious. Do I really want to question them, though? I mean, we're just here to sign a treaty. It's kind of rude. Hmm. Yeah, do you have any samples? Of course.
course you can, and I think you'll like it. The brew we call, uh, the brew we sell is nicknamed Grey Serpent. Fitting, huh? <laughs> yes, it is. And maybe we can give you some loudmouth monkey palm wine in return. Let's not do that. Uh. Ah, uh, yes. Ha ha. Just, just imagine this a warm laugh. Anyway, I'll make sure you and the others all leave with some, with some for the road. Good for aches, pains, or just a quiet evening. Thanks for saving the family trade. Okay, well, it sounds like the treaty is definitely going to help the upper class. But what about the lower class? Because they are the ones that are protesting, right? So I really do want to know specifically what their problem is. Because it's probably justified. I heard you and your cohort socializing. Naka, such an interesting language. Tell me, is it possible for a human to learn it? Yes, it is indeed. The royal family already has. Ah. Well, I hope you don't mind keeping, uh, mind keeping to our tongue as long as you're inside our city, do you? It'd be a great courtesy to those of us who haven't had the opportunity to learn. Hmm, maybe I should have told her to speak in our... Speak in their language. Hmm. I apologize on my cohort's behalf. She's inexperienced. Ah, well, we've all been there. I'm sure I've been guilty of more than a few misgraces myself. Just, uh, please be mindful then. Of course, of course. Hello, I'm Madhu. Adil and I rode from our home out by our lands just to meet you in person. And for a few days' escape. Was your journey pleasant? <laughs> Backhanded. Your countryside is nice. Even in its current state. The terrible thing to say. Hmm. Oh, yes. I always appreciate a chance to travel to places without a thick canopy. My mother and father visited the Naga territories once on a diplomatic journey. They said your homeland was lovely, and so abundant with resources. It makes me wonder why you need an empire at all. Hmm. Well, access to metals and ports are a factor. You should talk to us if you ever want a place to stay while you're on business. Our estate is very comfortable, and we would be pleased to do anything we could to facilitate trade and good relations. It's long past time we reached out to you, don't you think? And we to you. I hope all goes well with this treaty. This could turn the worst years of Behemoth's history into the finest era it's had in a long time. Let's go talk to the Serpent. He swallows and averts his eyes. Okay, that's not surprising. Laxmi. Oh, you are... I guess we haven't seen that yet here, but I remember from the demo that started in a different place that she's actually the... Um, what is she? She's like the leader of a village or something? Yeah, let's go talk to her. Have you spoken with my husband, Yogish? I haven't. Do me a favor. Do that first. It will make my life easier. Uh, okay. Greetings. Name's Yogish. I own the farmlands you people passed on your way in. Hope nobody gave you any trouble. Usually when my people see a big snake, they go at it with a spade. Hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to choose this option. And when we see a talking monkey, we usually put the jug down. <laughs> okay. Increase my uh, friendship with him. Say, how much do you need to drink to feel it anyway? I knew a man half your size and he had to drink a basin of wine just to get his head fuzzy. Uh, 
Oh, plenty by human standards. We have to eat more, too. Remind me to bring you over to my estate one of these days. Anything you want will be yours. Times are hard. But never too hard to make new friends, right? Peasants will hate it. But they've never even spoken to a Naga before. What do they know? Uh, yeah. I'm glad that you mentioned the peasants part. Honestly, that would make me uncomfortable. Of course, my wife might not, not like it either. She always gets... Tetchy? Never seen that word before. When I invite somebody over without asking her. So I try to ask people over whenever I get the chance. I don't take that kind of treatment from women. You know how they can get, yeah? Uh... Okay, I kind of hate you now. Perhaps things are... different in our societies. Yeah, I doubt it. You seem normal enough. And, wait, I seem normal enough? <laughs> uh, I seem normal to you. Okay. Anyway, my offer stands. You, your friend, wives, children, bring them all over. Just be sure I get enough warning so the house isn't a disgrace. Good luck with the treaty. Alright. I could see why you wanted me to talk to your husband first. Well, now that you've spoken with my husband, I suppose he won't begrudge us some conversation. He doesn't much like it when visitors speak to me first, you see. He finds it disrespectful. How do you feel about that? Wow, she didn't like that. Eh, whatever. Sufficiently in command of myself that I need to unburden on a stranger, thank you. Do not judge or pity me. My life is my own. Oh, I'm not judging you. I'm judging him. I meant no disrespect. Regardless of what you meant, you've achieved it. What did you really think you had to offer me? What did you think I had to offer you? Hmm. Good question. Well, I thought I could learn something of Behemer's attitudes, and I think I have. Oh, she's disgusted with me. Well, fuck you. We are different people, you and I. The Naga Empire and Behemra are naturally at odds with one another. Understanding will not help that. The only thing that's going to create a good relationship between our people is if we can is if you can give us what we want, and we can give you what you want. Remember that. Wow, you're both kind of disgusting people. Bye. I think I'll go talk to the servant. He's probably much more friendly. What was that? I think he was muttering to himself or something. Okay, anyone else to speak to? Let's see. Oh, hello. Have you been long in the city? As long as you know to give the slums a wide berth, there are many fine things to see here. A walk might be in order after the treaty signed, yes? Oh, I don't walk. Haven't got the legs for it. <laughs> oh. I'm sure there'll be much to do, but perhaps it can be arranged. There won't be that much to do. How much hard negotiating do you really expect? We have a few resources we can't use, and you've got the food we need to keep ourselves alive. All you have to do is go in there and throw in their faces, uh, throw that in their faces, and they'll give you whatever they want. Or go down in history as the royals that doomed us all. Hmm. That actually does seem likely. Given how desperate they are, you know, how much can they really negotiate? Uh, 
Um, still, though, I doubt it's going to be that straightforward. I suppose you'll find out. Just remember that whatever we grant you today, Behemra will always have more to offer. Personally, I'm looking forward to a long and mutually beneficial relationship. Okay, I think that's it. Ooh, I, th I actually just gained this trait. Disarming. Chitra doesn't mind using humor to make friends. Let's see. The patient thing to do would be to work the crowd to make a few friends. Or just inspire fear and respect. The impatient thing to do would be to find the highest ranking person here and throw my weight around until the royals are forced to see us. Look through a list of people and find Rhea. Okay, Rhea's training to be you, and has therefore found the most qualified teacher. She's nervous and not amazingly gifted, but she pays attention and she learns from what you tell her. Alright, let's go speak to her. How you doing? I'm fine, Jitra. You should talk to the others before they start to wonder. I think I've spoken to everybody, haven't I? You, 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 you. Yeah, who am I missing? That map is, well, strange. It's not very good, because it seems like my location doesn't actually move on the map. So it's a little bit hard to use. Well, let's see if I can go off to some other location. Ah, oh, I can. Ah! Hello? Oh! Isn't... Those are the royals, right? King and queen. I suppose I could force myself... into their presence. Hmm. Be kind of rude, though. Uh, let's talk to this person. Warm greetings, my name is Kanika, and I am priestess and advisor to the royal family. I have been asked to offer you apologies for their lateness. Well, we will remain patient. I have to admit, I'm a little more comfortable with face-to-face -face talks than formal political meetings. If you're finished with all your other business here, I'd like to talk with you about a few things before the treaty signing is underway. Alright, let's talk. I know there were angry mobs when you entered. There's a young priest in the temple district. A man named Ranvir, who brings bread to starving sl slum dwellers. Apparently he's been claiming that the Naga refugees in our slums are responsible for Behemra's continued misfortune. As though you caused the drought just by being here. He's a lunatic, and we'll bring him to heal. Yeah, he's not the root of the problem, though, is he? You already don't like us. We don't like you. Yet. There's a lot of fear and prejudice to overcome. Most already have, because they stand to profit. I suppose the slums fear that not enough of the food will make its way to them. Or perhaps they're just more superstitious. We're taking steps. We have hired a mercenary captain and his company to provide a permanent defensive perimeter around the slums and prevent anyone from crossing over into the city proper, where... I see the guard signaling. You can go and start negotiations now. Ah, damn it. I wanted to keep talking. Alright. Wait, what guards? Like... Do I go here, or you mean back here? Because, I mean, Rhea should be with me, right? And everyone else? Uh, let's go back.
Apparently not. Uh, okay. I guess I'm going alone. Without my bodyguards? I don't know. Hello! My apologies to both of you for the wait. It's been a long week. Hmm. <laughs> Should I bow? Do I bow? No. No, I don't feel like bowing. I had assumed. Right. Since we're already running late, we'll just have to skip the fun parts. No introduction, chatting, food tasting, any of the stuff that makes you want to get up in the morning and actually sign one of these things. Jeez, you sound like a Mr. Happy Pants. Well, with apologies, but signing this treaty is exactly why I got up in the morning. Really? I wish we had a few nobles like you. I think Vijay here is just about the only man in Bohemia who can ride a horse and do a decent day's work. He would be your advisor, would he? Right you are. Now, where would you like to begin? Well, the contract can wait. Let's talk about the angry mob that greeted us. We had meant to talk to you about the unfortunate anti-Naga sentiment in some parts of the city. We really do not believe it constitutes a threat. After all, the Naga refugees remaining in our slums have lived free of harm for months. How are you addressing the situation? We aren't sure exactly what the roots of the, dis of the discontent are. Ignorance, I suppose. Unjustified fear of Naga. But we know that the mob was the work of one priest, Ranvir. Perhaps Kanika has already told you about him. A lot of people listen to him. Why? We'll never know. Vijay has been speaking with him personally. Does Ranvir have grievances we can address? Ranvir is... unusual. He claims that Banka Mundi, whom his temple serves, has sent him a vision of how to end the drought and bring prosperity to the slums. It involves many things, but the key point is that we should shun your empire. He was not responsive to most of my attempts at negotiation. Perhaps I should meet with him. I'm sure he'd be willing to speak with you, but I doubt he'd be willing to listen. No, we'll need another solution. Wow, I can make some pretty extreme decisions here. I would put him to death. Hmm. This Ranvir will lose influence as prosperity returns? Maybe true, but... I don't like that option. No, it's a big problem. Let's not just ignore it. Hmm. Can his followers be turned against him, perhaps? You would think. I have a few plans myself, but they will require resources, and we are rather thin on those for reasons which, which will be explained shortly. The Naga Empire can give you extra resources for the duration of this threat. It seems appropriate. Well, that gives us more options to work with. Thank you very much. I suppose there's just one more thing then, isn't there? VJ, this was your idea. Do you want to explain it? You may have already heard that much of our profits from this trade exchange will go towards retaining the services of a mercenary company. They will provide a barrier between the city proper and the slums. With luck, they'll eventually be able to keep peace in the slums. Okay. 
That doesn't sound sustainable. Using the majority of the profits from the trade exchange for mercenaries? Okay, how exactly does this concern us? The Naga immigrants will not be easy to house. We will need to clear out areas of the slums to provide housing for them, as well as some of our own city dwellers. Obviously, this means that these mercenaries are in your interest as well as ours. Which is why we wanted you uh, we wanted to show you their effectiveness personally. It is long past time a representative of the Naga Empire met with your refugees in the slums. Currently, this is not possible. Therefore, I propose that once our mercenaries arrive, you, my wife, and myself venture out into the slums under a personal guard of those of these men. Naturally, you are at liberty to refuse. Not at all. I relish the opportunity. Then our business for today is concluded. If you will give us a moment to confer with our scribes, we will draw up the final documents. A pleasure to do business. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Hopefully going to the slums is not too dangerous, though. But we will be surrounded by a mercenary party. Can't be too bad, right? Ooh, did I gain a... Oh, I gained a trait. An inspiration. Cheater will go into harm's way for the sake of the Empire. Indeed. Okay, I've decided to accompany the royal family into the slums as a, as a demonstration of our nation's trust. I should con, uh, convene with Rhea to bring this diplomatic mission to its end. You're going to go with them into the slums? Are you sure about this? I am a little bit worried. Behemoth won't let harm come to its own rulers. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure about that, about that, to be honest. I don't think they're too happy with their rulers, either. It's risky, yes, but it's also a good faith gesture. Peace and prosperity are worth sticking your neck out for. Peace? We just listened to half an hour of people telling us how much they love the Naga, while meanwhile, just beyond the palace walls, there are riots breaking out because we dared to show up. This peace, uh, this place isn't even at peace with itself. I'm sure they'll be smart enough to allocate our foodstuffs towards the slums. I hope that's true. I really, really hope that's true. Things will get better in time. I'll do what I can. And when is your turn to be ambassador to Behimra? You'll do what you can. I don't know about this. Neither do I. But either I live, or history, re or history remembers me forever. That's a better deal than many of us will get. That's not what I mean. I mean, I can't shake the feeling that nothing we did just matters. I feel like when they tell the story of Behemra and the Naga Empire a hundred years from now, they'll spend a breath on what Chitra accomplished at the party, uh, at the party before moving onwards to the great, vast, and terrible inevitability. And I'm afraid neither of our peoples are doing anything to prevent it. Hmm. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Please, just... Let's gather the retinue together and go home. Okay, so I think this is like a summary. The deal was signed later that night. Two months later, Chitra would venture out with the royal family. The court spy, VJ, and a contingent of the captain's... Sh uh, the Captain Shames... Shames? Shams? I don't know. Mercenaries to serve as bodyguards. 
Only VJ and the mercenaries would return. Whoa! Shit. Acting in the chaos, VJ gathered support from the nobles to form a temporary ruling council with him at the head. It's probably like Shyam or something. Was charged with Shyam was charged with keeping further riots at bay. Unruly outlying farms would be managed by the recently widowed noblewoman Laxmi. Ranvir would represent the interests of the priests and slums. To appease the Naga Empire, Rhea was appointed Minister of Trade. Months passed. The temporary council failed to dissolve. Whispers of foul play faded. And still, the monsoons failed to return. Damn! Okay, so it looks like that's the format. You make a bunch of uh, decisions and... Well, it looks like you see the repercussions pretty much right away. That didn't go well. Jeez. God, that went horribly. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the, uh... This is the beginning of the demo. You are Tanya, a peasant, 15 years old. Tanya sometimes catches word of what's happening in the other villages, and it's never good. Merchants arrive with rumors of open revolt. Revolt. <laughs> That's the name of a game. Probably better to pronounce it revolt. Only to whisper hushed warnings about spies within the populace, watching and waiting for any sign of rebellion. However, Tanya's village has not seen any violence. Laxmi, the noblewoman in charge of the farmlands, has run this village personally ever since the death of her husband. Her soldiers keep one half of the peace, and tradition keeps the other. In the midst of this, Tanya is about to be married. It is not long before her future, and that of her village, will be decided. Yep. Fifteen years old and about to be put into an arranged marriage. There you are. Why is it you always mope off alone when Juhai is busy with work? Couldn't you find anyone else to amuse yourself with, instead of skittering off into some dark hole like a beetle? I was just doing some reading. I didn't want to do it in public because I knew Mistress Laxmi was returning today. It's not good for you, you know. You or Juhai. You've both got such small families. So you're going to need to have lots of friends to help with little crises once you've got your own households. I've never been unfriendly to anybody. If they don't like me much, that's their problem. If you say so. Nobles. They like things real clean. Simple. They like their peasants to do what they're supposed to do, when they're supposed to do it, without any fuss. Because when things are bad, and they have been plenty bad lately, they like knowing that some little thing isn't going to be the fire that burns their fields to the ground. And when it comes to keeping us right, they aren't too subtle. You know, your parents wanted to talk to you. I think they've been looking for you all morning. That's never good news. If I'd known, I would have stayed hidden. Well, you can't hide from bad news forever, can you? Got to face things teeth first. Go on. They're waiting for you. Okay, well, that's a pretty good place to end the episode. Yeah, it's an interesting format that they have. So it seems like you play out a scene, and then you kind of get a summary at the end of it of the repercussions of what you did. And then you move on to somebody else. And it seems like when you move on to somebody else, you deal with kind you kind of deal with the repercussions that happened from what you did before. Because it mentioned that uh lacks me the head of the farmlands in this village. It mentioned that her husband had died. Which is something that happened before. Kind of at the end, right? So we now move forwards from what I just did in the past. And I think we're going to have to deal with the repercussions of my decisions. Interesting. 
and the results of my decisions for that first... that first little scene were a hell of a lot more extreme than I thought they would be. A lot more extreme. I mean, damn. <laughs> that was really harsh. I mean, I wasn't taking a lighthearted approach to my decisions, for the most part. But... I feel almost like the game just kind of slapped me in the face and said like, No! This is reality, that's not how, that, how this works. And everything was much more horrible than I ever could have imagined it turning out to be. And I like that. I like it when a game has real deep consequences to your actions. And you can't just be flippant with them. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.